parts of Europe are experiencing a real punishing and extreme heat wave right now and it seems to have hit the Czech Republic today because it is absolutely roasting hot out there right now for the start of this qualifying session. Well I can assure you they haven't reached the shores of Britain, that's for sure. <laughs> Did they ever? Because <laughs> it was uh, blowing a gale there when we left. And here are the fans then, vests are on, they're ready and uh, well Aaron Kinnett wasting no time at all straight out on circuit so confident he is that he can post a good time he's got to be one of the strong favorites for pole position here in this session with no Jorge Martin if those of you haven't joined us yet Jorge Martin attempted it very brave effort indeed but wisely sitting out he's just in too much pain with that heel after breaking his ankle uh, over at Saxon Ring he won't be here and of course he is a demon in qualifying and so now we have to look over to maybe Kinnett is the now the strong favorite you it's hard to call isn't it yeah there he is uh, Jorge Martin still struggling with that uh, broken right ankle he suffered in the Saxon Ring what five weeks ago now the main concern for him though is a fracture that they found later on in his heel five weeks down the road from that big crash in Germany he's still not able to put any weight on that right for he bravely tried to ride in the wet conditions yesterday but overnight after consultation with the medical team and his Del Conquer Grusini Honda squad he decided it was best to withdraw from the remainder of this Grand Prix it remains to be seen whether he will try again in what five days time six days time rather to start practice for at the Red Bull Ring in Austria uh, but you'd feel that maybe he might be better served in resting up again and maybe try and potentially to return at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone coming up at the end of August. Beyond uh, Jorge Martin in terms of qualifying, we mentioned Kenet, we mentioned Mir. Fanati's not had a pole position for over a year, the number five snipers, River Cole rider who's headed out of the garage. He'll be looking to try and put that right. Will we get a new rider on pole position or will Bulliger continue where we left off? Of course, Bulliger has been on pole once in his career, that was in Jerez last year uh, and it was a stunning lap that he put in just seeing a flare that's been chucked into the gravel trap there uh, just in the background that's not ideal but hopefully shouldn't affect uh, anything too much the marshals will probably run over and see to that as soon as they can but a beautiful day for some bike riding potential chance of rain tomorrow sorry to be the bearer of bad news we'll see how that goes and develops in the end but right now all the focus is on getting a decent qualifying lap in Nico Antonelli on the left there Matt well he's had a miserable couple of seasons I think it's fair to say since Qatar last year nothing's gone his way and the misery continues well it goes from bad to worse doesn't it a crash this morning at turn three followed up by a second crash in the session turn number 13 proved unlucky for Nicolo Antonelli Still not back to 100% fitness, of course. He had that hernia in his back, which forced him to miss uh, the last round before the summer break at the Saxon Ring in Germany. He's only scored seven points in his last six Grand Prix. One podium in the last 27. It doesn't make for pretty reading uh, for Nicolo Antonelli, unfortunately. On board here with the championship leader, Juan Mir. Just been in a class of his own so far at the start of this season. A bit like Brad Binder at uh, points last year, Matt. Mir just seems to have ultimate control over the motorcycle, he owns it, he knows exactly what it's doing, he's completely in control and he just believes in himself so much at the moment, it's just very, very difficult to see past Juan Mir as lifting the championship trophy at the end of this season. Yeah, he's a firm favourite in my book, definitely. They're going to have to be careful here though, Definitely, yeah. cruising about, we've already heard about these uh, stiffer rules that are in place, you don't want to be cruising through sectors too much. Mike Webb and his team upstairs will be keeping a close eye on it. Mike, Joanne Mir, in fairness, is probably just trying to get a bit of clear track. But you can see there Menio following behind him, and the rocket is uh, number 10, Dennis Foggia, coming up from the CEV Repsol Junior World Championship, current leader of that series, replacing the injured Darren Binder. Just a, uh, just a quick note, guys. You'll see Aaron Kinnett. He was obviously the first guy to leave, uh, to leave pit lane, setting the benchmark. But don't necessarily trust his time too much because he has actually started with a medium rear. The vast majority, uh, especially the guys who expect to be quick up there, have already started with the softer option uh, rear tyre. However, that some teams do feel that the difference isn't that big and depending on what the conditions are like they're saying if it is still a little bit slippy like it was before maybe the medium could also be the one to qualify on and you know the one man who's shown that you can qualify on harder tyres unfortunately isn't riding this afternoon but uh, we know that Jorge Martin has often done so choosing the harder choice so that's certainly going to be something interesting to keep an eye out on 
Looks like Dillard, oh dear, and Bulliga. already Bulliga has gone down again. Disastrous start to qualifying then for the Italian. That's a turn, turn nine, nine, is it? Yeah. Yeah, looks like probably the front end washed out from underneath him. No damage to the left-hand side of the bike. Yeah, it's a right-hander, so... Well, the last time he went down, he recovered very well indeed. But he's not set a time at all here. Luckily, he's back on board the bike and he can get it back to pit lane quickly and then straight out on circuit again. You don't want to waste time in Moto3 qualifying, but that's not the start the Italian wanted at all as he now rides his bike back into pit lane, shaking his head. He's upset with himself. Good news is that he was able to get that motorcycle going again at turn nine. You're an awful long way away from the paddock here in Bruno. They spread over a vast area of woodland, just nestled on the outskirts of the Czech Republic's second city. Here we go, we're on board with Fabio De Gian Antonio and the front end just washing out from underneath Nicolo Buliga. Didn't really look, Steve, like he was doing anything out of the ordinary there. No, not at all, no. That's why he's probably shaking his head. That was a very strange crash indeed. Oh dear, Gabriel Rodrigo here is being walked away. Doesn't exactly look uh, steady on his feet there, Rodrigo. And there's a problem as well for Jakob Kornfile. There's a bit of damage to his motorcycle. He's definitely been down the road as well. In fact, they've been down in the same instant at turn 14. Now that is the final corner, and that is a very, very fast corner to crash here at the Bruneau circuit. So it's been a tough start to qualifying for a few contenders here. Bulliger, Rodrigo, who looks in a fair bit of discomfort Certainly on that uh, left leg. Matthew Casey will be pulling his hair out. And let's see who is at fault, if anyone. Oh, it's a big crash, big crash. Hard to say from there. But Gabriel Rodrigo, he just gets himself involved in incidents all the time and cannot keep that bike upright. And having not set a time as yet, he could find himself in a bit of bother here. Fairly second-hander. Saxo Print Perjo there as well for home crowd favourite Jakob Kornfart, who's had a pretty torrid home Grand Prix so far. He was only 17th at the end of free practice. Well, he's well, not getting much help here either. Well, here we go. Team's now pushing him back in, Dylan. Well, guys, a uh, quick word to our other crusher, Nicolo Bulliga. He's uh, managed to ride back to the pit, so much better than, uh, what, than it was this morning. He looks absolutely fine. Just met, uh, gesticulating, his right handlebars a little bit out of shape, but apart from that, no, no real other visible damage to the bike. They might change the fairing for aesthetic purposes, but apart from that, should not be a big hold-up for them. Thanks for that, Dylan. Yeah, I wonder if Aaron Kinnett has gone out on circuit, and he's working more on race pace at the moment. It's something he needs to concentrate on. He knows it's a part of his game he's got to improve on. I think, I think you're absolutely right, Steve. The, the way the team said it to me, they said just working on getting the feeling with the medium, you know, a bit trying to solve that problem that they had at the Saxon ring. But he is at the same time trying to evaluate, he is going to evaluate the soft relatively soon because they don't want to miss that, uh, that, that window of opportunity either. Thanks for that, Dylan. Kaito Toba's crash now at turn 13. We've had over 30 riders falling here so far here today. The pile continues. Here's Juan Mir trying to get a bank lap in earlier, 209.6. To give you an idea on times, as Mino goes quicker, uh, 208.7 was the fastest earlier this morning set by Nicolo Bulliga. Yeah, the outright pole record here set by Alex Rins four years ago now, 207.622. Dylan? Yeah, sorry to butt in all the time, guys. There's uh, more crashes coming back. Uh, Jakob Kornfein now back in, and that bike does. Look, uh, that's certainly been crashed pretty hard. The entire fairing will have to come off the seat unit chains as well. Uh, the entire right handlebar looks like the brake master cylinder's gone as well. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm certain he's going to be back out there again, but he's certainly not going to have uh, the kind of laps he would have wanted. No, that's for sure. A couple of red helmets on our timing screen at the moment. Fanati going particularly well. Uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time this weekend, as uh, Kaito Turbo gets pushed into pit lane, KTM have a uh, new fairing on the front, just in case you're wondering. Slightly wider looking. Uh, they're just looking to try and gain as much advantage as possible. Uh, try and close that gap to Honda. Kaito Turbo there just simply losing the front, yeah. much like Budiger earlier. Classic front end washout at the penultimate corner. Unlucky 13 then for Toba. Fanati's on a good pace again here. In fact, he's just come through the second sector up by over four tenths of a second. So it's flying Fanati right now. He 
He does hold the circuit lap record here, Romano Finati, in the race here in 2014 at 2.08.064. Although he's never had a podium finish here in Brno in his previous four visits as Marcos Ramirez swings majestically through that final corner. Good lap coming in from Ramirez as well, possibly a front row lap. 15th at the moment, yeah, he goes second at 2.09.472 then from the highly rated Spaniard. Mino on another decent lap. Fanati going to come through sector three in just a moment. Mino's lap's gone from him, Fanati's has not. We're on board with him now. That's an Aya Bastianini just up ahead of him. Will he get held up here? Bit of traffic. That might just cost him a fraction of time, but can he hold on to it now as he tips it right? And now tries to get the drive and get the slipstream behind Bastianini across the line for Romano Fanati. And he will go quickest with a 209.218. Yeah, he's looked in good form this weekend so far. Fanati was strong in the rain yesterday inside the top 10 again this morning. There's Nicolo Budiger, who's put his body and his team through the middle a little bit today. Just waiting patiently, or as patiently as he possibly can, for his mechanics just to patch up that damaged Sky VR46 machine as we look at a bunch of riders sweeping down into turn three. Fanati's just done them all around the outside there. I mean, that was incredible. He's got so much speed on the rumble strips. He's just gone around the outside of a whole lot of them and peels off into the distance. Confirmation bottom of your screen there. Rodrigo, after that tumble, has gone off to the medical centre. Yeah, Bastian is not too enamoured with uh, young Tony Arbolino there his fellow Italian did seem to sit up a little bit as they came out of turn number four there Arbolino and that definitely forced uh, Bastianini to roll out of it nothing going to come from this group on this lap they've just been overtaking each other and holding each other up Joan Mir is a part of that as well here he is the number 36 comes into this weekend as championship leader with a 37 point lead over Romano Fanati Mir himself on a personal best lap at the moment and just tucked in neatly behind Bo Ben Snyder. Yeah, that might give him good slipstream up horsepower hill. Down the bottom end of the circuit, the Kevin Schwantz corner. And here is Bulliger then quickly back into the action. Didn't lose an awful lot of time after that spill at turn number nine. Back with Mir, who's got Bo Ben Schneider just ahead of him. Good reference here for Mir as he comes out of turn 12. Up the famously named horsepower, he's going to get great slipstream here. Mia just drafts up the inside of Bo Ben Schneider. So, what? How much of an impact has that had on Mia's time in this final sector? I'm sure he'll pick up the three tenths or so that he needs to depose Fanati at the top of the timesheets as McPhee comes back into the pits. Here is Mia then out of the final corner, over the line he comes. Up to fourth then, just misses out on the front row, a 2.09.547, the exact same lap time registered by his Spanish championship rival Aaron Connect. Guys, just wanted to mention Nicolo Bulliger back out on track. I've spoken with the team about the cause of the crash. They said what they've done is since this morning they made a, uh, a relatively biggest change in the setup. Uh, so he was essentially feeling his way around, but he said he didn't know exactly where the limit was. Uh, so that was unfortunately his way of finding out. It seems odd that they would change the setup when he was quickest earlier on, and, and I mean that time that he set earlier on as well is four tenths quicker than the current fastest, maybe even five. So wouldn't you just send him out on think, the old setup? I think I think the one the one argument is because I've I've often asked crew chiefs that that same question, and they just they just look at me with this face and say, well, look, Dylan, just because you've gone fastest in one session doesn't mean you can't go faster. So they say we know that that setup works. So now you then look for the setup that's going to give you another extra tent, knowing that if it doesn't work, you can always go back to the other one. I think, I think that's, the, that's the reasoning behind trying something else, even when it does go well. Ideally, if, if your rider doesn't crash, uh, <laughs> which is what exactly is what happened. Um, but, well, we'll see how it works out for Bulligay. He's got 25 minutes to really knuckle down here and try and get himself a decent lap as it stands. Uh, Marcos Ramirez here will be lining up on the front row of the grid. Never had a front row start. No, best ever qualifying was fourth last time out in the Saxon ring, which he duly then converted into his first ever Grand Prix podium. Shout out to Maria Herrera yet again. If you join us this morning for FP3, we were singing her praises when she knocked on the door of the top 10 in 11th place. Maria, well, she's in the top 10 now in the early stage of this qualifying session. She's up into eighth with a 209.698 which is only a couple of tenths actually 
off of the front row of the grid. So Maria Herrera's uh, found a bit of pace here in Bruno. And working tirelessly through the summer break, Maria Herrera on fitness, trying to get herself prepared for the second half of this season. It's been a dismal start, let's, let's be honest. Uh, Maria Herrera, what has she just had one point uh, all season? The uh, point yep. in Argentina. Yeah, that's interesting, it. wasn't it? In Aston, was it a couple of races ago? The team drafted in Carlos Checa, former Grand Prix winner and ex World Superbike champion, just to have some input, go out and look spot on a circuit for uh, Maria, just to feed back some information, what he was looking at, where she could perhaps improve, and maybe that's been a bit of a, a turning point in the year for uh, Maria because she's having an excellent weekend so far. Well, Nico Bouliga having crashed, gone back out. it has got the track to himself at the moment. He goes through sector one, four tenths down. He's not set a time as yet, so uh, anything will do right now just as a banker lap and then get your head down behind the screen and see what you can do after that. This is his first full lap then with this new setup. This is where he went down earlier on. No such drama this time. Six tenths off Fanati's quickest. Well, Gabriel Rodrigo's had a very quick visit to the medical centre. He's obviously been declared OK. Just went on a quick check after that big crash at turn 14. Caught up in a tangle with Czech Republic rider Jakob Kornfar. And of course, the outcome of that early crash was he hasn't as yet set a time in this qualifying session. Only 29 riders another, have done so so far, Dylan. Another big problem. I don't, I don't know whether you could see that from the camera shot. His bike is not back yet. Yeah, that is a slight issue. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to set a lap time without a motorcycle, are you? Skateboard, anybody that they can loan Gabriel Rodrigo? Good news about Jules Danilo as well, Steve. We were a bit worried about his uh, physical state after he was caught up in that Philip Ertl incident at Turn 3 this morning. Well, he is out on track in this qualifying session and actually doing a pretty good job. He's a second off the pace down in 18th. Seems to be a little bit more of a struggle for German Ertl, who's down in 24th place right now as they instruct Nicolo Bulliger to head back to the box pretty sharpish. You wonder, don't you, if they're now going to revert back to old setup or something. I mean, it's a banker lap and he's, he's into 16th. I mean, I might have been tempted to just leave him out for one more lap here, but hey, let's see what happens. Doesn't look like a rider who's about to make his way into pit lane. He's got, <laughs> he's got Aaron Kinnett up behind him. As he breaks now down into turn number three. The first sector time comes up and just through there before he tips it right. This is the Red Bull KTM IO team, Antonelli and Ben Snyder. Currently, both of them looking for better than they've got. 13th and 14th for them, respectively. And here's Philip Ertel, who was second quickest before that crash earlier on this afternoon. He could do with that wrap time right now. A 208.8 would put him in pole position as it stands. He's down in 24th. Yeah, not a glowing record here either for Philip Ertel. Just a couple of 15th place finishes in his four visits. Both of those in the last two years. Ash Gianini has got work to do. Scars on his face there from a scooter crash back at home in Rimini in the last few days before he got on the plane to come to the Czech Republic. And he's down in 22nd place right now. Best of 2.10.640 from Ash Gianini. 1.4 seconds off of the best time. There are a handful of riders, and more than that, that have got a tedious record at qualifying so far this year. There's an opportunity opening up here in Bruno for pole position. Who wants to take it? Dylan. Yeah, guys, uh, you were mentioning Maria Herrera early on. I'm down here with her crew chief, Mark. Hey, Mark, it looks like Maria's taken a real step in this session. What have you found? Um, yesterday was a disaster in the rain, and she was really, really lost. Uh, this morning, we didn't do anything different. Uh, pretty much a face setting with the bike, um, and it's just clicked. She feels really comfortable, feels really strong. Um, we've got a new swing arm, like all KTMs, for this weekend. I think this is inspiring her as well. This has given a little bit more brake stability, helping the turning a little bit. And also this afternoon, we've gone with a new fairing, um, and that's also helping. So, But mainly, it's coming from Maria. I also saw you just sent her out with the softer option front. I remember when we spoke a few races ago, you said this KTM doesn't really work well with the soft because it puts too much stress on it. Is that, has the new swing arm, has that all changed that now a bit? 
I think it's more just this circuit and the temperature that the S front seems to be working not so bad. If we'd had enough M's on the allocation, we would have been medium front again. Our, our first exit was uh, medium uh, front, soft rear. Uh, second exit is soft, soft, and then the third exit will be medium, soft again. Uh, so you. Uh, so, uh, so you've got enough softs to do to do three runs in qualifying? Three exits, yeah, and we still have a soft tyre for, uh, we think the soft's going to be the race tyre. Fantastic, thank you very much, Mark. Thanks for that, Mark. Thanks, Dylan. Livio Loy's come to a halt here. Yeah, and he's not happy about it, is he? That's yeah. over at turn three. I think that's an understatement to say he's not happy about it. It starts punching the seat. Well, it's, it's, he's not getting any help at the moment, and of course, you only get one bike, and it, he just wants to get it back, and it's real. It's going to be hard work from there. Um, it's just on the inside of turn number three there. I don't quite know exactly what has happened. But a load of riders have come out of pit lane. 20 minutes to go in Moto3 qualifying. You never really know what you're going to get in Moto3 qualifying, because a lot of riders trip each other up. While Dylan was talking to Mark there, you saw Andre Migno and Juan Frank Guevara cruising out of pit lane. Be careful, boys. Be careful. Yep. Race direction will be watching you and watching you very closely. Romano Finati then, the last time he was on pole position was over one year ago in Mugello at his home Grand Prix. Well, he's set for pole right now with a 209-218 ahead of Andrea Migno and Marcos Ramirez on the provisional front row. World Championship leader Mia fourth, then it's Kinect fifth into Gian Antonio in the top six. 2016 Bruno winner John McPhee in seventh ahead of the brilliant Maria Herrera up there in eighth place. Tatsuki Suzuki ninth, Livio Lloyd tenth. Uh, but we've just seen him encounter some technical issues out on circuit at turn three. Yuma Sasaki up there in 11th. That's a pretty good effort from the Japanese rookie. That's Guevara, Antonelli, Ben Schneider and Tony Arbolino. Nicolo Buliga, who's had an early fall at turn number nine after that massive crash at turn 10 this morning. Buliga in 16th. Atarap Puvipat going well in the dry there in 18th ahead of Jules Danilo. who was a heavy faller at turn three this morning. Dennis Vodger in for the injured. Darren Binder there covering himself in glory just outside of the top 20. He's ahead of the likes of Anea Bastianini. Tim Georgi, the German wildcard, who dazzled in the rain yesterday, down in 26th place. No time set as yet then for Gabriel Rodrigo and the Czech home crowd favourite Jakob Kornfile. They were both down the road very early on at turn number 14, just before they were poised to set a lap time. So the two of them still not to trouble the timesheets as yet as frantic work continues in that Saxo Print Peugeot team to get Cornfile back well, out onto the track they've still got 17 and a half minutes to go Dylan well also a good bit of news you could say good news I mean bad news is that Gabriel Rodrigo's bike did turn up just as you were going through those timing screens uh, it actually didn't look anywhere near as bad as Jakob Cornfile's bike they are just changing the uh, they're having to change the right handlebar but apart from that it's generally more of a fairing job and uh, so hopefully in about five minutes I reckon he'll be here back out. Thanks for that Dylan on board now with the man who at the moment is on pole position as Matt just said it's been a while the Jello last year the last time he was on pole he doesn't have fond memories of that race a bike went pop on that particular occasion Fanati though is not known for pole positions in general it'll be his 89th appearance tomorrow he's only ever had three pole positions in terms of his front row starts this year he's had four of them and for every single one oh no he's been on the podium for three of them so if he can qualify well Fanati's usually in the mix and he's on another good lap here this is better from Fabio the Gian Antonio who's disappeared off our radars a little bit over the last couple of races in Aston and Germany he said Aston was the worst race of his career Gabriel Martinez Abrego has crashed at turn 14 that's the second fall for him off today I think he went down at turn 14 this morning as well didn't he so turn 14 not being too kind for the Mexican rider, the Gian Antonio does go onto the front row of the grid in third, but Romano Finati poised here as we track him through turn number 14, the final corner. Heads to the start finish line now. Finati was up by a fraction on this lap. Has he done enough to improve? Not quite. It was a 209.277 by Finati, so just a fraction outside of where he needs to be. Mir's gone up into second place. He nudges the Gian Antonio off the front row. The championship leader just four hundredths of a second slower than Fanati on that lap with a quarter of an hour remaining. There he is, he's gone past Albert Arenas, heading now down towards turn number three. Guevara's gone across the line into eighth place. Middle of that third row. A 
Mears quicker still through sector two. Sector one, sorry. Did he just run slightly wide on the exit? That was close. I think he might have just dipped both wheels off the outside of the kerb through turn four, which will mean that lap time scrubbed off the Saxo print. The Peugeot team have done a phenomenal job to get Jakob Kornfile back into the action. Still to post a lap time in this session as we track an AR Bas Giannini. He started to turn up the wick a little bit. He's climbed up from outside the top 20 into 12th place, just over half a second off of Fenati's provisional pole time. Uh, guys, there seems to be some problem with Jakob Kornfeld's bike. He almost went ahead out into pit lane and just turned it round and he's riding straight back again. He guys posted. OK, well, we'll see what happens. He's still got time to post a few laps at the moment. No one getting even close to Nicolo Bulluga's fastest time from earlier on. A 208.773. OK, uh, guys, very quickly. So that was um, essentially the, the handlebars and the steering seemed to be completely out of line. So he wasn't going straight when he had the handlebars straight. So just uh, easy, easy to forget. You know, I say, I say easy, but when you have such a big fixing job, you kind of get all the parts back into a place, and then if it's just slightly off, which is something that you notice as a rider, as a mechanic, maybe not quite as easy to see. So pretty quick fix. Hopefully in a couple of minutes he will be out. Yeah, you don't really want to go on the start-finish straight with your handlebars pointing towards Slovakia. I think no. it's, uh, it's not ideal. Joan Mir here has got some pace in Sector 3 and 4, but is this a lap that counts? That's the question. Doesn't matter anyway. Suzuki, though, behind him, has gone up into third. Cracking job by Tatsuki Suzuki, who was on the floor twice in this morning's third practice session. But he's got himself into a pretty fast group here, Suzuki. He's never been anywhere near the front row, Matt, in his, uh, in his entire career. His best qualifying is a ninth, Tatsuki Suzuki. And considering we were talking about his attitude, uh, we'll talk about it more in a moment. Pulaga there, mighty close to the outside of the circuit limits. We get him across the line. He goes up to eight, and now he's on another charge. Going back to Suzuki, his demeanour, his attitude, Matt, is what gets him where he, he gets. You know, it's just fantastic to see that after two crashes in free practice three, that Tatsuki Suzuki can just pick himself up and go, well, we'll have another go. Yeah, mark of a class rider, isn't it? How you bounce back from adverse situations. We talked about it yesterday. He had that the worst run of his Grand Prix career. Did he just dip a wheel outside? Yep. That's, well, it's the rear wheel. It's not both, it's not both wheels. I think he might just get away with that one. Yeah, and as it started to slide off the edge of the kerb, he just kept that throttle absolutely nailed. He looks on it at the moment, Bouliger. Okay, he's had a couple of crashes, but it's just something about him at the moment, Nicola Bulliger here this weekend, that suggests that he could be on for a fight for the race win here. Yeah, Suzuki got himself into this good group here. Fanati trying to cheeky right around the outside of Suzuki and Bastianini. Yeah, I was just going to say, before this great one of three successive top ten finishes for Tatsuki Suzuki, he had not seen the checkered flag in Austin, Jerez, Le Mans or Mugello, the worst one of his Grand Prix career. And to bounce back with a 10th in Barcelona, an 8th in Assen, and then a 9th last time out in Germany. More power to the Japanese rider. His teammate Tony Arbolino is getting pretty busy as well behind Fanati and Bastianini. He's done this a couple of times of late, Arbolino. Managed to latch himself onto the back of a couple of quick riders. Dragged him around to a couple of top 10 qualifying results in the last two races, Arbolino. Fanati getting the information he'll like to see there. Qualified fifth, didn't he, in the Saxa ring, I believe. And that enabled him to get away with that Lee group. And he was running really strongly inside the top five before he crashed, dropping down the hill towards turn three. Yeah, you get the feeling he's one sort of big result away from just that becoming a regular feature. Cornfile, they finally got things straight. And now he's ready to go out on his Peugeot labelled Mahindra and try and set a lap time. Dylan. Well, guys, uh, Jakob Kornfar now, they've managed to get his bike uh, completely straight again. And at the same time, Gabriel Rodrigo is also going to be leaving the pits on a fresh set of flicks and a brand new bike. There's Nico Antone. Thanks for that, Dylan. 17th at the moment. Not really what the doctor ordered. And his teammate, Bo Bensnyder, in 18th. Akiayo will not be smiling at that. Alberto Pucci here on the left, talking to McPhee on the right. McPhee in 11th and they're waiting for the last sort of seven eight minutes now where things will get rather frantic 
Yeah, slightly warmer and slightly drier than the conditions that John McPhee had to win the race here one year ago. That famous win, the first win for Peugeot. 11th place at the moment for McPhee, who himself had a tip off at the Kevin Schwantz corner very early on in the third practice session this morning. Budiger with 10 minutes to go, still got time to find. He's rolling off on this lap, whether it's just to start another or whether he's popping into pit lane, who knows, but... So tight though, Steve. Thank you for an end to wrap Puvapat. The Thai rookie is down in 22nd place, but he's nine tenths off the pace. Then it's Foggia, who's making his Grand Prix debut, he's 24th. He's only 1.3 seconds off of the pole time. Super, super tight lap times here in Bruneau. Rodrigo's got back out into the action then. This will be his first time lap of the session. So he at least will register a lap time. Where will he end up on the grid though? Rodrigo recently in terms of qualifying hasn't been able to find the front three rows. In fact, that goes for the whole season. And his qualifying has not really been up to standards. Tim Georgi goes across the line, improves his time, but he's in 26th place. Yeah, he might have been listening to your uh, weather forecast earlier on, Steve, and his ears might have pricked up because when you said there's forecast for rain from about 11 o'clock onwards tomorrow, well, we saw how strong, how strong Tim Georgi was in those rain conditions yesterday. He will have nothing to lose as a wild card. He will be going for broke, and if it is wet, well... There might be a few cheeky Euros going on, Mr. Georgi, tomorrow. Yeah, unfortunately, the bookies have uh, wised up to that. Cottoned on, haven't they? Uh, and they've cottoned on, and I think his odds were shortened something like 12 to 1 this morning when I uh, looked. Here is Ayumi Sasaki. One thing that he's had to do as he talks to Hiroshi Ayama there on the right yep. is get your qualifying sorted. Well, at the moment, 15th isn't quite getting it sorted, but it is a bit of an improvement on what he's done in the last few rounds. Top, top guy, Hiroshi Ayama, of course, famous for being the last ever 250cc two-stroke world champion back in 2009. Great loyal servant to Honda as well. Still does a bit of test riding for HRC. Heavily involved, of course, uh, with the unearthing and developing young talent in the Idemitsu Asia Talent Cup. He's a likeable lad, is Ayumu Sasaki. He's got loads of swagger. He's cheeky chap. He's really, really fun to watch just in his, the way he is in and around the paddock. But I'll tell you what, you know that he's got something potential there because to have Shuhai Nakamoto yeah. next, sitting next to you in FP3 and then Ayama in qualifying. Well, he's been touted and tipped as the next Japanese golden boy, hasn't he? They've been waiting for quite some time to get their next big star. They were hoping Taka Nakagami was going to emerge as that one. He hasn't really lived up to uh, full expectations. Jakob Kornfart. There's a straight back in here on that uh, Saxo Print Peugeot. So Kornfart is in danger of having to start his home Grand Prix from right at the back of the grid because he has not yet logged a lap time. And he's running out of time. Yeah, long laps here at Bruno. Let's not forget. That's a stare that is going to put pressure on those mechanics. Well, opportunity knocks here in terms of who wants pole position. Who's going to be the first to open the door as it stands? Fanati, Mir and Suzuki will line up on the front row. There is just under seven minutes to go. These guys are only going to get a couple of flying laps in at most because it's an over, over two-minute lap here. Long old circuit this, just under five and a half kilometres long. This Bruno right. circuit. Dylan? Guy, just, uh, just an update on why Jakob Kornfahl is back in. Uh, looks to be some issue with the brakes and now bleeding them once again. I, I did see them do it beforehand. You actually have uh, Mahindra Mechanics coming in now, just trying to, sorry, Mahindra Engineers actually coming in, just having a look at the calipers uh, as well. So one of those real, just such frustrating situations for him. Yeah, well, majorly frustrating at the moment because if it continues for the next couple of minutes, he won't get out for a lap at all. Yeah, and I don't want to remind him too much, but if he doesn't score points in his home Grand Prix tomorrow, it'll be the first time ever in his Grand Prix career he's gone five races in a row without troubling the, the scorers. This just gives you an indication of how tough it's been this year for Jakob Kornfart. Gabriel Rodrigo's back in. I'm not sure there's ever been a year that Kornfart hasn't been in the points in Bruno full stop. He's got a brilliant record here at his home circuit. Yeah, you're right, Steve. Points in all seven with a fifth on his home GP debut back here in 2010. He was six last year. In fact, in the first four home Grand Prix he had, he was inside the top ten. So it's a, 
a circuit that he does love, he does like. Livio Loy was able to uh, get himself back to the pits after that technical problem he had at turn number three. And it looks like the Leopard Honda men are going to blink first here. Out of the garage there goes McPhee, Suzuki and Air Bastianini. Tim Kiyogi now exits pit lane as well behind some feisty candidates. There's Jules Danilo in the background there. He's now exiting pit lane and Kinet also. They're all flocking out now. It's going to resemble the peloton in the Tour de France at this rate. They're all just waiting for somebody to get in the front and start sprinting. They were, well, they were, if they're lucky and they don't mess about, is that a problem Mia for the stalled it. He stalled it. He has stalled it. He has stalled He hasn't, has he? No, no, no he's, he's fine. Going. He's got it going again. It's all groovy. He's gone. Now, provided they don't mess about, they should all get two flying laps in. But the clock is ticking, and we have seen it before, Matt. I like how you said provided. <laughs> we have seen it before. I'm sure Christian Jungbo, their technical director of Leopard Honda, was a little bit worried there when he saw Joanne Mir having a small issue exiting pit lane. Well, someone who will now hope to have no more issues, Jakob Kornfar. Looks like they've got the problem sorted. They're just going to start his bike up now, so with any luck, he'll get those two laps in as well. Thanks, Adel, we can see him now on our screens. He will exit pit lane. He will probably only get one flying lap in. Well, that's attempt number three, is it, to get him into this session? Hopefully it's the third time lucky for Jakob Kornfar. Bulliger, who was quickest quite brilliantly at the end of FP3 this morning after that massive high side at turn 10. He's been on the floor also in this qualifying session at turn number nine. He has a good long look over his shoulder just to see where his teammate Andrea Migno is. Clearly see there Migno drawing that new profile, that wider KTM fairing. Who will get pole position? Fanati, a moment, stands tallest. On board here with Aaron Kinnett, perhaps one of the favourites for pole at the start of this session. You can see what I mean. Look at the clock at the top there. Three minutes and ten seconds to go. Now, these guys are lapping in the 2.09. So, if they go across the line, these guys here should be fine. But it's the guys who are sort of a bit further around in sectors one and two who are really pushing it for two flying laps. Yeah, they're going to have to pull the pin a bit, that's for sure. Fanati, Mir and Suzuki at the moment, that's your front row. Of no course, point cruising that, guys. There's less than three minutes of the session remaining. And, and this is the problem, isn't it? When this is going on as well, you don't even know if the person who collects the fastest time will actually start on pole. Because penalties could be thrown around here. Here we go then, Romano Fanati. He, at the moment, sits on pole position and they start, eventually, their first flying laps at the end of this Moto3 qualifying session. Can anyone beat the 209.218 posted by Romano Fanati? We're about to find out. These guys can't afford a mistake because if they run at full racing speed, which of course they will, they will just about get over the line for one more lap. So you don't want to be making any mistakes this time around because it will be game over and curtains for your qualifying time. Maria Herrera's got herself in good track position here. Tucked in nicely behind Aaron Kinnett, pole man last time out in the Saxon ring. She might have got this track position absolutely spot on. Juan Franco Vara's gone quick through the first sector, as has Fabio De Gian Antonio. A lot of personal best sectors there for Ertel and Sasaki as well. See, Boudiger's only going to get another lap. That's it. So Nicola Boudiger's got this lap now. This is his challenge for pole position because there's only a minute and a half of the session remaining. The only good thing for Boudiger is it looks like he's got a bit of clear track up ahead of him. Here is Romano Fanati coming there around turn number seven. Sector two will flag up around about now. He's on it, isn't he, Fanati? Has he lost a bit of time in this sector? He hasn't, he's gained time, he is on it. Romano Fanati then, oh, John McPhee's crashed. Pushing hard to try and improve on 11th place. It's been a pretty difficult day for the Scotsman, the race winner here one year ago. That's his second crash of the day. Back with Fanati, though, down at turn number 10. He's already sitting pretty in pole position, trying to secure his first in well over a year. Rodrigo's gone quick through sector one. Guevara's up still through sector two. Nicolo Buliga will not be on pole position. 
He's quarter of a second down in sector one. Juan Mir's not far away. The championship leader hasn't had a pole position since Austria last year, and he's only six thousandths of a second down, but Guevara is on an absolute flyer here. But has he just run into traffic at the wrong moment? He's there just behind Lorenzo Della Porta, and I fear that that won't work out too well for Guevara. Let's see. He will get one more lap in. Yeah, this group will get in one more lap. Has he done enough? Gravara over the line. Mia's gone pole. Gravara, he's gone pole. Fanati, Fanati again. And what oh, about fantastic. Gabriel Rodrigo, Steve? Gabriel Rodrigo, who has only just got out on the circuit. This will be Rodrigo's first time lap, and it could be a pole lap. Unbelievable. Gabriel Rodrigo, who has not been on the front three rows all year. He missed most of the session. He hasn't set a lap time so far. <laughs> His first flying lap of the session could be a pole he's lap. Absolutely on clear. it. The Argentine coming through now to oh he's just being held up slightly there by Ramirez but he's got a bit of time in the back and he's got some slipstream. The checkered flag is out. Could he be making history here? Gabriel Rodrigo's first flying lap across the line he goes pole. and he takes pole. A 208.5. Now, it's not secure yet because Livio Loy's on a flyer. In sector one, Matthew Casey cannot believe it. Don't celebrate too soon, guys. This session is not over by a long way. Andrea Migno has crashed out. The best Migno can hope for is 12th place. Rodrigo then, having spent most of the session waiting patiently, he's been in the medical center after that crash at turn number 14. It happened this morning. Bulliger had a heavy crash, went to the medical center, returned and took the fastest time. What about these laps? times Romano Fanati's not going to recover he's half a second or four tenths back in the second split I think you know Rodrigo looking at the lap times it. he might have just stole this the last Argentine pole position in any class was Sebastian Porto Phillip Island 250 cc in 2004 and Gabriel Rodrigo from nowhere he has been abysmal at qualifying this year he Me crashes early on there's Mina who's crashed yeah, I can't see anybody that's going to threaten him at all. This was Migno. This is at turn eight. Front end washout. Yeah, that's exactly what happened for Migno. Gabriel Rodrigo was in the medical centre about 25 minutes ago. His motorcycle was wrecked at turn number 14. Never say never, as they say. Well, a few riders going wide there. Will anyone challenge for the front row? No, Bastianini there. Ben Snyder's improved to sixth. The good news for the RBA racing team is they've got both of their boys on the front row. Rodrigo's pole and Guevara's third. And you might well celebrate. It's been Casey a lot needs to lie down in a dark room. <laughs> he can't believe it. What an afternoon for the RBA racing team. Nobody in the world would have predicted after that early crash at turn number 14 that Gabriel Rodrigo would go on to make history. What a session. Late, late drama as always in Moto3. Didn't disappoint. He will not believe it. Not often, I've got to be honest, that you see Gabriel Rodrigo smiling. He's got a permanent frown on his face, it seems, uh, around this paddock. But it might change now when he receives the news that he is on pole position. Yeah, and a nice new Tiso watch in his first pole position of his Grand Prix career will take away any pain that he's got from that heavy fall at turn number 14. You have got to go to Park Fermo, young man. Hats off to Gabriel Rodrigo. This was the incident for John McPhee. Not been a great day for McPhee. If he's going to win for the second year in a row here in the Czech Republic, he's going to have to do it the hard way because he's qualified down in 19th place. Kanet's had a disaster as well. He's down in 17th, Matt. One of the favourites for pole position here. What about Anaya Bastianini, who's got a really impressive record here. He's never finished lower than fourth Bastianini. Third and second in 2014 and 2015. Fourth last year. But he's going to have to start from 20th. Mir and Bulaga won't be crying into the night. They'll be starting on the second row. They can definitely win the race from there. But this is a shock. Nobody saw Rodrigo getting pole. That's for sure. We said at the start of the year that the RBA Racing KTM team, they had a really good outfit. Rodrigo has struggled with consistency. Guevara has shown glimpses of magic. It's not quite all come together at the right moment, but it has today. Yeah, the RBA racing team will sleep pretty well tonight. Gabriel Rodrigo has started from the front row once previously before. He qualified fourth in Australia last year, but with a couple of penalties that were banded around, he did actually move up to third place. There has never been 
a rider from Argentina pole in the introduction class in Grand Prix history. Sebastian Porto was the last in the 250s in 2004, but there has never been a rider from Argentina take pole. Gabriel Rodrigo is the first. Always nice to create a bit of history, especially when half an hour ago you were sitting in the medical centre wondering if your weekend was over. Confirmation of what Steve told you there. Sebastian Porto, 13 years ago. Well, <sighs> that, that was, when was we the crash it... earlier on with Rodrigo. Well, that's when we thought it was session over. I'm sure he thought it was session over. If you would have said to Gabriel Rodrigo right at that very point there, don't worry, you're going to get back on track and you're going to take your career first pole position, the first by an Argentinian rider in 13 years. I'm not quite sure what the response would have been. I don't think it would have been a friendly one. But there you go. Over the line he comes. Euphoria inside the RBA racing team. What an afternoon it's been for them. First and third on the grid. Sandwich D, the side of Romano Fanati. Cracking little team, that RBA racing outfit. I'm glad to see them get such a positive result. And I'm happy for Gabriel Rodrigo as well because we're the first to give him a bit of stick because we do know that he perhaps does spend a little bit more time than he needs to in the gravel trap. But confirmation on your screens very, very shortly of a historic first ever pole position by an Argentinian rider in the entry level class. Gabriel Rodrigo's brilliant 208571. He was in the medical centre 30 minutes ago, but he's now on pole position in the Czech Republic. Fanati and Juan Fran Guevara rounding out the front row. World champs in the Juan Mir Hedgerow 2, joined by Nicolo Bulliger and Bo Ben Schneider. Marcos Ramirez, Fabio De Gian Antonio and Livio Loy. That's your third row. Philip Hurtle fought back from that big crash this morning at turn three to get inside the top ten. And good ride by Ayuma Sasaki there in 11th. Antonelli, a couple of crashes this morning for him. He'll start 12th ahead of Tatsuki Suzuki. A late fall in that session for Andrea Migno. He goes from 14th on the grid. Just ahead of the impressive Nakari Natarat Puvapat, who was within a second of pole. Disappointments, as Steve said, for Aaron Kinnett, 17th. John McPhee, 19th after a late crash. Anea Bastianini, a two-times podium man here in Bruno in the last three years, but he's down in 20th. Maria Herrera dropped down late on. She was inside the top 10 at one stage, but will start from 21st. First, Tim Georgi, who was so strong in the rain, he was 30th. Gabriel Martinez Abrego was a four at turn 14. He was 32nd, but it's all about one man. History made here in Moto3. The first ever rider from Argentina to set pole position in the introduction class at Grand Prix level. All hail Gabriel Rodrigo. There's still loads to come this afternoon. Stay tuned. Next up, F.